Hi folks, this is a short video explaining how you can create week-by-week -week forums for students to engage with in your module and time release those discussion forums. So in this scenario, in our study materials area, we have structured our content in week-by-week -week folders. This could also be topic-by-topic -topic folders, um, but it's just to give you an idea of how you can structure it. And you can create discussion boards elsewhere in the module, for example, via course tools, discussion boards. You might also have watched my other videos where I created discussion boards for groups. But in this case, because we want the students to engage with those forums in specific folders, it's better to just go ahead and work with the discussion board tool from within those folders. OK, so we're going to go into the week one folder and create our first week discussion. So we go up to the tools button and select discussion board. We want to create a new forum. And we're going to call this week one discussions. Now this description area is very useful to use to explain how you expect students to engage with this forum and how many posts you typically want to see from them. Posts being things that they originally post to the forum or replies to other people's like discussion threads. So you've got a few options about engagement. It doesn't all have to be them taking the initiative to write everything. Um, so what we've got is, uh, let's just pop in quickly for the sake of brevity, expectations, and what I hope to see, rules of engagement. Okay, now what I recommend you do is copy this content because you're going to need it a little bit later. So I've just used Control C on my keyboard and I'm going to pop it into this note that I just had on my computer here. So I can come back to that a little bit later on. So, uh, forum availability, we want it to be available because this is the first week folder. So this is already that we want that to be available as soon as possible, basically. Um, then for this one, we want to keep it standard view, and I will explain this next option here where it's participants must create a thread in order to view other threads in the forum. We'll come on to that. Um, then the mark in the forum, we can specify a mark. So this could be an attendance type mark. So we could uh, mark out of one, for example, complete, incomplete, um, or it could be that you mark the actual engagement in the forum. So. You can definitely add that in as an option if you want to. For now, I'm just going to leave that as no on this particular forum because it's only week one and I want to come onto that in the later weeks. You can also, as an option, mark threads. So that's um, something, again, I'll come on to how threads work, but essentially they are sort of sub-discussions under um, a topic-based forum. OK, keep going down the list here. So uh, we're going to keep it with forum alignments. Uh, we are going to allow students to subscribe to the forum and we'll include a link to the post in the email. We don't want all of the body text in the email for privacy reasons. Uh, we are going to let authors edit their own posts and delete their own posts just in case they um, have written anything that they did that was an accident or something like that. Uh, but we're not going to let them delete their posts if there are replies on their posts um, because that would affect other students' work. We are going to allow members to create new threads of discussion and we are going to allow file attachments and allow users to reply with a quote from someone else's comment. So then we hit the submit button to commit these options and you can see that it now has taken us kind of back to that first screen, but instead of creating a new forum, you can see week one discussions is available. So then I can click next. Ah, but guess what? There's that text field again. So we do need that text that we did before because we might have spent quite a lot of time writing it. So there's my little notepad that I kept handy from before and I'm going to paste that in. So obviously your description will be much longer than that and more helpful. 
and then I do recommend tracking the number of views so that you can get an idea of engagement beyond those who are actually posting and as I said this is week one so we just want this to be available right away so I'm going to hit submit so now we've got this week one discussions at the very top of our week one folder okay so let's move on to week two so week two we'd like to be a little bit more sophisticated we would like the students to use the discussion board to uh, write their own reflection on the lecture that they attend in week two so we're going to again go into the folder we're going to go into the tools option and we're going to select discussion board we're going to create a new forum we're going to say week two lecture reflection so again i'm going to say the same thing explain how you what you would like the students to do in very clear terms here so write one write your own <laughs> reflection on the content from the lecture on x with y instructor as an example Okay, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to pop it into my little notepad. This little notepad app is on your computer if you're on Windows 10 or even earlier versions of Windows. So you can always uh, keep it handy. I always keep it pinned to my task bar for this kind of thing. Pro tip there for you. We want the forum to be available at this point in the setup because um, we can set the availability dates at the next level. If we set them here, it can be a bit confusing because you can end up with two layers of settings. So just leave this as it is for now. We, in this case, we want students to write original work. So we're gonna, instead of giving them the standard view, we're gonna let them, um, we want them to participate by creating a thread and then they can see everyone else's. So you would want to include that in your descriptive text just to explain the expectations there. In this case, we would like the um, students to be uh, sort of marked on their discussion forum uh, participation. So I'm gonna do like a, a, a mark out of one instead of 100 because this is just a participation mark. So it's kind of like an attendance mark. And we can decide how many times the student posts before we're flagged. So we've just asked them for one post, so we're going to keep that as one. This flag is just something you visually see in the Grade Centre, just so you know what that is. We can add a due date, which is always a good idea. I'm not going to do that right now, but it could be helpful. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to keep this as allow members to subscribe. Um, we, in this case, a lot of these options are going to be um, closed down because of us selecting the participants must create a thread option. So it's just a bit more restrictive way of how these posts work. If you're worried about it, you can moderate the posts, but uh, generally it's okay. So if I then hit submit, then again we want to select this time the week two lecture hit next and then we're going to need that little handy bit of text that we copied again so pop that in there and then this is where I would recommend doing your date restrictions and again selecting track number of views because that's helpful for statistics later on so then I want to display this after the week two session so I'm going to say okay I want to or actually at the end of week one would make more sense, wouldn't it? So we will display it at the end of the day on Friday so that the students have over the weekend to think about it. Um, and then I'm going to leave it open after that so they can refer back to it for revision purposes. So that's another good thing to put in your description to connect these activities to any final assignments, how the students are going to be building up through the module with these activities. Okay, so that's going to automatically become available on the 24th of April at 5pm, which is fantastic. 
Okay, so the third type of discussion board that I'm going to show you is a discussion board where the threads are graded. So to explain how that works, essentially, if we go into week three, we are going to create threads ahead of time for the students to respond to, and we want to um, assess how well they do at responding to those threads. So if we go up to the tools option again, click discussion board, we're going to create a new forum, and then we're going to call this week three, respond to the discussion threads. And then you describe what you want them to do. So, for example, uh, we could say, I have selected the four key topics from this week's lecture. Please respond to each of the topics at least once. That's quite a tall order, but I'll let you uh, decide how you want to run it. Um, obviously, you can put a little bit more um, guidance in there for the students. So once again, we leave the form availability as it is, but this time we're going to set it so that the threads are marked. So just to explain this, members cannot create new threads. So you're going to have to create threads um, if you want students to engage with this. If this is turned on and uh, you don't have any threads, then it's basically a useless discussion board, unfortunately. So uh, we are going to allow students to subscribe and then we want to allow people to be able to edit but not delete their own posts. Okay, so we'll hit submit and then we'll add that in. Um, and then again, we'd want to have that description that we wrote before to hand. I forgot to copy it, so um, trust me when I say that I uh, would add the description here about what to do. And uh, this is where we can set the date restriction. But I'm not going to do that right now because I want to show you how this type of forum works. And for that, I need to keep it available to my test student. So I'm going to hit submit. And then in order to create the threads, you can go in and create this if the activity is hidden to students, just to clarify. I will create my topic threads. So lecture topic one. And I could have some kind of prompt here for students to respond to. And then down here, this is where I need to decide if this thread is marked or not. And so if I turn this on, then I can decide how this thread is marked. So let's say I was marking out of 100 on this one, um, then I can hit submit. So this is uh, clear over here that I've got this little marking mark thread button. So then if I create another thread for lecture topics two, and then again, I can mark the thread. So you would do this for all of the four lecture topics that I provided in the scenario, but for right now, we're not going to do that. So if we go and take a look at the grade centre in terms of what that shows us now that we've created those, you should see that we have um, columns for each of those topics. So if you are doing this and you don't want the students to get the feedback right away, you are going to need to go and just quickly hide the columns in the grade centre. Okay. And then if I go into being a test student, I can quickly do a quick demo for you. So if I enter into student preview mode and respond to the discussion threads.
There we go. And then again, if I wanted to get back, I can, as a student, I can even review the marking information. So I can see sort of what is going to be collected for my marks on these um, threads. So you can have threads and only have some that are marked, but you saw that that was an option when we were setting it up. You can use these discussion boards to go back. So we can go back to the discussion board and go to the week three discussion and then go to the other lecture topic and respond to that one. You can see that you can attach files to the responses as well, so that's quite helpful. We've used that before. So if we're back in instructor mode now and we want to have a look at what the student work is like, we can go to the full grade centre and have a look at those columns for our week three discussion. So you can see that I can go and mark user activity from here and I can go and see how the student has uh, interacted with those threads. So that's a more sophisticated or complicated way to have a discussion board, but it could be useful so that you've only got one forum with multiple threads that you sort of pre-set up. So it really depends on what you want to do. So the next thing is that it would be quite helpful for me to show you how that week two activity worked where we allowed the student to um, post a thread or post first before they could see any of the other students' materials just to make sure they were coming up with their own original thoughts. So if I just quickly make that available to students, we'll take the restriction off it. So to show you how week two looks, if I go into study materials, week two, click on week two, and then this is how it looks if I am coming into a discussion board that's been set up in this way. So I can't do anything in terms of looking at the discussion forum until I've created my first ever thread. So you can create a thread and say, very minimalist thread there and then I can hit submit and you can see that if there were other threads from the other students then I would be able to see those in the list here and if you're wondering what this marking information thing is it essentially shows the students a preview of how they're going to be marked so it shows sort of all of their forum interactions to them and then they can see them all on one page and see what is going to be marked. So it is quite um, a transparent tool in terms of explaining to the students what they've done and they even have some forum statistics here where they can see how many posts, how many, the, the length of their posts, the average posts and the time they spent on their posts and things like that. So it's uh, quite useful. So that is essentially how you can have some different types of topic-based discussion forums, I should say, uh, available within your module.